everybody. Today we're going to show you how to do a short circuit impedance test on a power transformer. So I will, we have already prepared for this test, pre-prepared. What I've done is I have connected the secondary side. I have short circuited completely the secondary side as you can see here. What is important is that when you do this test, you need to use thick wires. If you're getting bad results, what you need to do is to use thicker wires. That's because what we're going to do is we're going to generate voltage on the primary side, about 100 volts, and the secondary side will be short-circuited, and in that way, what we're looking for is actually the losses in the copper. So short-circuit impedance test gives us the losses in the copper, shows us the losses in the copper, while, for example, no-load test is showing us the losses in the core. Now, what is important in this test? It's important, of course, as I mentioned, to correctly short circuit the secondary side because the currents passing through here might be quite big. When I say big, maybe a few tens of amps. And also it is important to correctly connect the whole test. So let's start with the connections. First of all, what we will do, since as mentioned before, I have prepared before, I'm gonna repeat what I did, we will use this output here, the 140 volt output, and you will see one thing right now, I'm gonna say to STS that I want to do a short circuit test, and when I do that, it will light up the LEDs as for any other test, of course, next to the inputs and outputs I need to use. So what you can see is this output, this output is used, and these two inputs are used. So how, how am I connecting? Voltage is being sent to this M meter connected in series in order to measure the current coming from this output. Then I'm sending this to the transformer and I'm closing the circuit with this cable here. So I'm just sending voltage and I'm measuring the current which is coming from that voltage source. Another thing I'm doing, I'm measuring the voltage drop in the same points. So let's, let's connect right now. Let's see, this one, this one, this one. This is my voltage and I'm gonna connect it to phase A, connecting the plus of the voltage and then I'm gonna connect the neutral and here is the neutral. So with this, I will generate 100 volts here on the primary side. What I need to do is also to measure this very accurately and for that purpose we're going to use the 300 volts input and I have already connected as you've seen in the STS this input and what I need to do oops, is to connect it here on the transformer and right now we are ready to start the test. Before we start the test what I want to show you is that we have a nominal data here and it says 4%. So 4% is my nominal value for this transformer and effectively what, that, what does this mean is that if this is a 20 kilovolt to 400 volt transformer I actually need to generate not 100% but 104% of primary voltage to get the nominal voltage on the secondary side because 4% will be lost due to the copper resistance in the windings. So th these are the losses. How am I doing this? Now let's start configuring the test. So now we are configuring the test. First I go to power transformers and then I choose the short circuit impedance test. Let's talk about the short, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. Before that, I need to make sure that the value, the nominal value of percentages is, is correct. So header nominal values. The 4%, which we've seen before, has to be changed. Now this is five. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this to four. And then I'm also gonna set, set this as a default header. So, this is me saving and going back to test. 
Now, what I'm, what I'm expecting is to get 4% or a little bit less or a little bit more. And let's see how to obtain this value. First of all, you can see from the top that I'm now by default in the position minus three. When I look at my transformer, it is in position zero. So I'm going to change this to position zero. This result changes from one position to another. So you have to make sure that this number is correct. Then I'm not going to use temperature compensation, even though I could. But what I'm going to say is that I'm using the 140 volt output AC. I'm going to generate 100 volts and maximum current will be one amp. The frequency is 50 Hertz. I'm just going to do this test at 50 Hertz. And later we'll talk about another test where we alternate the frequency in order to obtain some other values. Um, proceeding. I'm not using SDCS for now, so I'm leaving that as it is. And then what I need to do, I need to decide whether I will do it per phase test or a three phase equivalent. Three phase equivalent is done, I would say in 80 or 90% of the cases because the number you're getting on the nameplate is done in the factory using three phase equivalent method. So, and three phase equivalent has to be used if you have a delta on any side of the transformer. Since I have a DYN11, I have to use three phase equivalent. Per phase can be used only if you have YY or YN, YN or Y, uh, sorry, or Y, YN or YNY transformer. So long story short, I'm now choosing AB because I'm connected to phases AB and I will have to repeat this test three times for BC and for CA if I'm not using SDCS and I'm not using it. Then you move your cursor all the way to here and then you get an option add test. I'm adding a test and now I can start the test. So for this particular test, you don't have to turn this key because this is not high voltage. It's let's say it's not 2 kV output. And just to repeat, I have connected voltage generation and voltage measurement here. I have short circuited the secondary side and now I'm going to, going to generate 100 volts here, measure the current and I'm going to repeat it also for phases B and C and CA. So let's start with AC, uh, AB. Start. So what we are seeing here is that the voltage is 100.00 or 99.98. So it needs to stabilize. So we generated for phases AB 99.964, very close to 100 volts. One amp, was, sorry, 0 0.324 amps are measured. We can also see that the losses are 12 watt with this values. There is impedance, there is resistance, there is reactance. And these are the data we got for these two phases. Now we're moving on to phases BC. So I'm just changing this. B and C. By the way, if you have SDCS or SDCS plus, you don't have to do these changes. It's a switch box, which makes it automatically. My next step is choosing now the BC, again, going here to highlight this line, and then I'm getting the add test option, and I'm pressing the button. As we are generating this, we did a, bit calculate, a little bit of calculation, and we realized that there are only few amps running through here. But if you do this test for a long time, you might feel that this is getting a little bit hot, which is not a problem. The second test, BC, again, we generated very close to 100 volts and the current is around 0 0.32 amps, which is good. That's what we expect. We expect same values if everything is fine. My third step will now be generating on phases AC. So now this will go to phase A, sorry, phase C. And this one will be connected to phase A. And when we finish the third test, we will automatically get the result. The first third test is the test CA. We highlight this line, we press add test and we press the start button. We can see that the current is again 0 0.326 and right now here below we can see the results we have obtained. The nominal value is 4%. We got 3.83. There is a deviation of 4.23%. 4, 4 and for me, 
In this case, for this transformer, this is a good result. Uh, what is a good, what is a bad result definitely depends from a standard in a certain country for a big and for a small transformer. Let's say that the values between 2, 3 and 4 percent are allowed, but in my case, since this transformer is, let's say, a testing, a demo transformer, I'm not splitting hairs and I'm allowing it to have this much error of 4.2 percent. Of course, what you can do now is to make this test, let's say, a little bit more um, interesting is to change these positions of the tap changer and do the same test on different positions, which would give you a much better overview of the whole uh, state of the transformer. But if you get more or less a good results for this position that of tap changer, then you don't need to repeat anything. Uh, to close the discussion, let me just give you some tips and tricks if you are getting some errors. What you should do is see if your STS is really generating the voltage which it should generate and if for some reason the current which is generating if it tends to be bigger than the allowed current then you can also increase this. So you need to play with these two parameters if you have some issues and also keep in mind that of course whenever you press a question mark button you see how the connections needs to need to be done. So from voltage out AC output to the current measurement input to measure the current onto the high voltage side and closing with this and then measuring also the voltage drop on the high voltage side for phases a b b c and c a and with this i would also like to show you another way how to see the results you see this small button here it can show you the results in different so is it resistance is it calculated the resistance is it impedance is it losses so this is the place where you can see the results of course right now i don't have them like this but like this and we can see now that we have between the resistance between 104 and 114 for example so here you can compare for also different positions of tap changer so thank you for your attention and hope to see you in our next video.